Hey there, everybody. It is Friday night. You know what that means. The bar is open. Woo! Oh, my goodness. I'm expecting a very cool show tonight and very it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm a little nervous, but it should be fun. I think it'll be great, great discussion. Um, so I'm going to get right to the rules because we don't have a lot of time with our guests tonight. So I want to make the most of every second. So I'm going to go over the rules, put them up on screen. There you go. So rule number one is you guys can ask paranormal related questions to me or the guest. And in return, we will give you our opinions. Mine will probably be a little bit more skeptical, <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, rule number two is that I don't know everything and I don't think my guest knows everything too, but that's okay. Cause we can look up stuff and it's okay not to know things. It's okay to say, I don't know really important thing. Uh, rule number three, and this is an important rule for some of you out there tonight. Listen to Patrick Swayze and be nice. That's it. It's the golden rule. You love that guy. All right. Um, this is a good show for, uh, good communication, discussion, friendly discussion of people from different backgrounds. So that's what we do. Rule number four is if you have a question for me or the guest, please put a cue in front of it. That helps producer Donna, which is over on the side here, pick Hi. out the questions and uh, and get them to us. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to all the questions tonight because there's a lot of people joining us, which is great. Um, but we'll try to get to all the questions. And then lastly, rule number five, this is a bar. So drink up. I got my rum and uh, I know my guest has a drink uh, <laughs> and I'm going to bring them on because we're just going to get right to it. Let me see here. Let me get to it. Uh, and there he is. What? Oh, wait, I got to I got to unmute you. Um, oh. There we go. I'm on rule five. You're <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. How you doing, Jason? Good. How you been, man? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm trying to get a buzz on. Because it's been a long week. Oh, I know it really has. I mean, even even here in Rhode Island today, we got I got hit by five inches of snow no, today. Oh, I know you got snow. Yeah, I heard about that. It's like it's it's in the middle of April. What the hell <laughs> right? Down here, we we get we go back and forth so much. Like one day I'm in a, like a tank top and shorts, and then the next morning I'm out there. I'm like I got I need a like a hoodie. I need a jacket. I need my thermal underwear. What the it was hell? In the 60s. It was in the sixties. Hit seventy something the other day here too. And that's mm -hmm. and in two days it's supposed to be back in the sixties and seventies again. Right, so, right. I don't know. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. So, uh, I think a lot of people were surprised when I announced that you were going to be on this show tonight. Um, and and I think for the most part because they don't they don't know we're friends. Well, and also, I, I think people only see one side of me on on uh, television too. And uh, you, you and I have known each other for geez, almost twenty years. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've talked to you numerous times. I've actually called you and asked asked your advice on certain things as well. And uh, I, I, I think it's always been, yeah, you know, I've always been one of those people that I'm willing to look at look at both sides of things. I never want right. to sit there and and you know me, I've I've never wanted to sit there and say it's a ghost. I've always wanted to look for that that explanation. And if I can't figure it out and somebody else can help me figure it out, great. So be it. Right. Right. And, and it's, it's not something like I promote. I don't like put on social media, like, Oh, guess what? You know, Jason Hall is calling me today. Ask me for advice. You know, it's not, that's, that's just bragging. It's, I, I enjoy our conversations because we get into the nitty gritty of things, you know? And I mean, it's, it, it's exactly what you said. You, you don't know what something is and you call and you ask for an opinion and we talk about it. Well, it's and, always respecting each other's uh, direction, respecting each other's opinions and thoughts, and I think that that's important. It's, uh, and I, I just, I don't, I don't think I see enough of that from the paranormal community, or, or sometimes even the the really far, uh, far out skeptics. I think people just need to stop casting stones at one another and try to figure things out. I, you know, I've, I've been one of those people that I believe over eighty percent of all hauntings can be disproved scientifically, right? And, uh, you know, and I still, to this day, I, I think that. And I appreciate it. I mean, I appreciate the, the idea that we can talk. And I mean, we've we've talked about a, a few things, uh, even stuff that happened on the show. Like when you had ghost hunters, we, mm -hmm. we talked, you, you talked and asked my honest opinion. And I mean, I don't I don't sugarcoat shit. You know, well, I tell you exactly what I think. And I think that's and what I've never run from it. I've never run from that either. Right. Right. I've, always, I've always respected that. And and that's the thing. I think the tough thing with ghost hunters, especially, you know, the early years, I think. So when you're when you're doing a show, 
you can make as many shows as you want, but the network decides what shows air. So right. you can do a thousand cases and out of those thousand cases, 800, you might be able to disprove 200. You don't, well, it's a network's channel, so they can air just those 200. Mm-hmm. So you spend a hell of a lot of time filming things that, that never air because of that. Cause they so, only want to try to air the, the spookiest ones. So the, so I guess the question that comes from that is how much control do you have over, over that? I mean, you, you cause it sounds like you film a bunch, you submit it and then the network pick and chooses what they want to do. And that's definitely what was happening. Uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't so much in the earlier years because we could only film so many cases. I mean, we, it was, you know, we're trying to do uh, regular jobs and, and do this. And, uh, but then it was all of a sudden when they started ordering 26 episodes, uh, 26 episodes a year. I mean, you find you're on the road, you know, 26 weeks out of the year. If not, well, I mean, most of the, most of the cases are actually going almost two weeks. So you're on the road a year straight. Right. And, uh, so at that point, it, it's like I, I have the ability to watch cuts and everything else. But the least thing you want to do sometimes is you're hoping that they're, they're keeping it real. They're, they're uh, keeping it straight. But the least thing you want to do is I just filmed this investigation that took me two weeks. I don't want to see it cut down to 43 minutes right, right. Least, because that just drives you crazy because there's a million things that you want in it. Um, but, uh, you know, so sometimes you just end up not watching those cuts. And, yeah. and you realize that this show's not airing, but that one is. And, and you'll ask about this show and, uh, you know, and network shows. Yeah. So we got, we got a question already. I love questions just popping in. Uh, you said that 80% can be disproved. Can you give an example of something you have seen that you could not disprove? That I've seen that I cannot disprove? Well, that um, you have seen that you cannot disprove. Well, I mean, anytime, anytime you catch something like thermal imaging of what mm-hmm. appears to be something there that you can't see with your eye, but it's showing up on camera. I mean, that's something that you see, but you can't disprove. And it's tough because you, it's not like you want to sit there and say it's a ghost and all, and all these other things. I think there's such a wide ri- The paranormal is this huge umbrella. Yes. Ghosts and hauntings fall in the paranormal. Para just means above. So it's above the normal of what we're used to. So, I mean, there's different things when it comes to time overlapping and things of that nature. And uh, so cases might not be anything that have to do with, with a spirit uh, per right. se, could just be at some for whatever reason. You know, times overlapping at at and at that moment, you're picking up on something that might have might have been there prior. Just like these residual type haunts that uh, a lot of people talk about, you're seeing you know you're seeing these walls and you're seeing things walk through the walls. But then when you go and you research some of the history of the property prior, and you find out that there used to be a doorway there, and but mm-hmm. now. They walled it over. And now the doorway's down there, but the spirit, the so so-called spirits, walking through that. Well, is that a ghost or is that more of just again time overlapping because that's the path that this thing followed through that time? So I think there's so many different questions that come into play when it. So with the that. with the thermal cameras, I've always I, I've made this suggestion, but like online and like in in groups and threads like that. But maybe you're the guy to talk to. I I have an idea about that because. I don't like when a, a group goes around with one thermal camera and that's it. Like one person is holding it and they're going around filming and they get something they can't, they don't understand, can't explain, which is, it, it's not unusual because you're looking at a, a color coded image now rather than a, a visible light uh, image. Why not have a visible light camera mounted right next to it? So you get that, you, you have the same view but with the two different cameras, because I, I know like most of the, when I get sent an image, like a thermal image and people are asking like, what do you think this is? Like, honestly, I don't freaking know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, it's a blotch of red. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You know, do you have like a, another camera or a, a image or something next to it? You know, you need something to compare to. You can't just well, go off of colors. And I agree. And I think when you, if you've, if you've seen us, most of the time, if I'm walking around with a thermal or, or even uh, one of those thermals, Steve or whoever else usually has a camcorder with them as well. So, uh, so we're able to, to get that, but also it's tough because you're trying in the same regard, you're, you're trying to keep a minimal amount of people in, in a location. And that's, uh, so when we go in, we try to make sure that my camera guy who is with us has a hop system. So I don't have to have an audio man in, in the building. 
the audio man could be outside hearing in case there's any audio issues, but okay. because he's got the hop system. So we try to keep it to a bare minimum of the least amount of people possible. So you don't have to worry about any contamination. Okay. And, uh, so again, that same, same with equipment. So sometimes you're using a piece of equipment. I might have a thermal, but if it's a certain style thermal, then I have to have a cord running to a clamshell that whoever's with me is carrying because we can't really see what's going on or it's not recording internally. It's got to record to this. So, and, but now equipment's come to a point where it's really, uh, it's getting a, a lot better. It's, it's opening up the doors uh, mm -hmm. to just a lot better footage and being able to internally record on a lot of those devices that you prior, prior you couldn't. That's helpful. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, Adrian Hill wants to know, what do you mean by time overlapping? Okay, so there's been cases in the past where uh, we've investigated um, and we've caught what sounds like voices, but they're living a normal day in their life and we're doing our thing in ours. And for whatever reason, that either we're hearing them or they're able to hear us or, or uh, both. So if they're living a normal day in their life and we're living a normal day in our life, there has to be some sort of, you know, they're still where they are in time and our time's here and time's a very it's a tough concept. I think you'd, you'd agree with that. They say it's, it's present here. Um, but so it opens up this door is if time so you're talking more of a, like, a, like, a, not, a, well, not, not even a residual, residual. More like it, it's time's always present. You're talking uh, about different dimensions overlapping each other and maybe contacting and, 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 yeah, not even so much different dimension, but it very possibly time. It's it time in general overlapping. I mean, I don't think we, I don't think we understand enough of it at this time, and I, I wish I could uh, explain it better. Uh, all right, um, yeah, have another drink. Yeah. Maybe we'll kick it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't. I really can't get into that topic too much, and I know you can't either because we don't have the the background in this. Exactly. I, I wish. I mean, I'm. You know, I, I was a computer guy. I was a you know a master tech for Subaru. I'm a plumber by trade. I gotta admit, I'm far from the smartest guy in the room. It's <laughs> it's just, and I do the best I can. Um, see, Jason, in your book, Ghost Hunting <laughs> Stories, you said taps are being formed. You want to come up with a more scientific way of doing stirring investigation. Do you feel like you've accomplished that? I um, like this. He reads his own questions. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, You're the first one to do that. <laughs> I, I, I can I can read. Awesome. Um, do, uh, do you believe that paranormal teams need to use scientific method more often? Um, I believe that we we are doing the best we can trying to keep it as scientific as possible. Um, of course, I think we can always do better and we're trying to better that with, uh, with equipment and different, different ideas and concepts. Like I said, with uh, me even asking uh, you, you for advice on things, Kay. Um, and I think other teams, I think a lot of other teams out there are doing it as well. Um, I've met up with a bunch of, of great people who have given us different tips that we've, that we've learned. I'm far from a professional. I mean, there's no professionals when it comes down to paranormal investigation. I mean, it's, uh, you can't be a professional in something that you scientifically can't even prove exists. So yeah. I'm just doing the best I can. And if somebody comes along after me and they're able to take this field and, and figure things out, if I played a small part in it, then, and then I'll feel great about that. So I, I'm, I'm going to go the other way with this question. Um, I know the most, most groups, most amateur groups that, that I've and when I say amateur, I mean all, amateur scientific. We're, we're, we're all amateur. Yeah. If you um, when, when we're talking about these groups and going out and trying to be scientific, when you study the scientific method um, and methodology, you understand that, no, they're, they're far from being scientific. Um, but I think some are trying. I think they're some trying. Are, I, they're I trying agree. I, instead I agree. Of, and you know as well as I do, there's, there's people out there who are like, oh, that bump, that's a ghost. <laughs> oh, oh, that that light flickering, that's a ghost. Oh, that knock on the wall, that's a ghost. No, the knock on the wall could be everything from air on the line, a plumbing line, down yeah. to down to a chipmunk in the right. in the wall, which I've I've experienced. Um, down to electrical issues, things of that nature. It's not always a ghost. And so there there's those people out there who automatically everything that happens is a ghost. To be, uh, but there's also those that are out there that are like, well, you know what? Let's investigate this further. And I think more and more people of that nature are are getting into the field because they're and they're trying to push out those people that think everything is a ghost i think you, you kind of touched on it there um about investigating more i still see i, I see it changing a little bit and, and we talked about it a little bit before the show um i see a shift 
going on with with some groups because they want to investigate more. But I still see a lack of investigation where it comes to science and particularly with controls. Um, Absolutely. When and you, you know as well as I do, things take time and things move slowly. And where, of course, I think more if more and more people out there uh, are willing to connect with with other individuals, kind of like yourself, and 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 so forth, I think that will help push the field forward a lot quicker. I think I. I... I, I think we're like going like this, but I'm, I'm with you. I understand where you're coming from. Um, I, I think, yeah, that people need to learn more. I think they need, need to read science books. Uh, I think they should yeah. stop reading um, some like the local ghost story books and pick up a science book and, uh, and understand controls. Um, because one of my big pet peeves is when like somebody leaves an audio recorder in a room and then walks away. And just thinks, oh, well, we're capturing EVPs, and they're not. They're actually leaving it open to massive interpretation, misinterpretation, because Absolutely. any freaking noise that you get on that machine co- kind of goes the way you mentioned, where it's like, oh, that's a ghost. It's got to be a ghost. I heard a noise. I heard a word. Yeah, nobody was in there. Nobody. Right. But yeah, if, but you, yeah. You nobody know, was yeah. in there. Neither were you. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's no control. So. I, I get it. Yeah. And, and I think a push towards more of understanding science. I think that's the basic idea. The best basic thing I'm trying to get across. People need to have a better understanding of science. And I, I agree with that. You, you, you know, you and I have talked numerous times before, before this over the years. And I've always, I've, and I've always felt that as well. I think people right. really need to, to focus more on the possibility of, what could be causing this? And it's right. not always that ghost. It's not always, you know, a parent paranormal. So Aldra says, Jason, have all the unexplainable episodes. I like how unexplainable mm. is in quotes. <laughs> Which did you feel had the most compelling evidence? Um, geez. Well, I mean, out of all, you know, I did 280 episodes of Ghost Hunters, so it's, and I'm, I'm getting old, so I can't Is remember. That all? <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and uh, we, we've done uh, 30 episodes of uh, Nation. And uh, I'll be honest, I think one of the most interesting ones was we just did a, we did an investigation at this brick and ash restaurant out in, uh, out in Massachusetts. And the weird thing was we caught this name, um, this William name, and it said it had a first name and a last name. Now this was like on the first first night or two of investigating. Um, we hadn't done any research. We because we always try to do our research, you know, after because we don't if we if we research something prior and we go in, we find out you know a little boy burned in the back room. We might focus more of our attention on trying to con- connect with a little boy in a back room. I don't want to do that. I want to go in and try to just go in with an open mind and do the research after. And we got this name William with a last name and. It was like three days later, we're going through the history and the research, and we found this William, who was a big part of this building, his first name and last name. And I think things like that are amazing because how do you how do you connect that? You're just like, wait a minute, we we got this name on the first day, but we're finding the name in in history, you know, four, three or four days later. So I think things like that are some of the most compelling uh, bits of evidence that that we've uh, that we've had. Okay. Interesting. Happy to hear. <laughs> happy. I'm happy. Oh, you go in blind. I read that wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. At <laughs> first, I was like, I was like what? No, it's, I haven't drank that much. <laughs> <laughs> Keep drinking. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's that's good. Um, my my only my only uh comment, I guess, would be that I I've heard so many so many alleged EVPs, and again, I'm coming from more of a skeptical uh, approach here. But I've heard these these sounds. And this actually wasn't EVP. This well, I guess it it could be more of we heard we heard a voice, and oh, so it, not a recording. It was more of a disembodied instead of this uh this EVP that you supposedly don't hear at the at that time. So this was not a recording. Well, it was, uh, it was, uh, but EVP is usually you, you're not hearing, you don't hear it at the time and it, it right. shows my recorder where this was more, we heard, we heard a voice and this was, that, that was the voice. Oh. Was there. So, That's interesting. Yeah. So it was definitely something a little That's, different like that. Yeah. I've always worried about, you know, EVPs, 
they're they're interesting to a point, but yeah, it's it's always tough because you, so many people can hear something different, in right? That. And uh, interpretation is, is yeah, and then you yeah. then you get these people who go out and filter filter the hell out of them, <laughs> and by the time you're done, I mean you can make it sound like anything. So right. uh, how do you know? Yeah, I, I when I when they over over edit or over enhance and it gets that metallic um noise to it or or they're like oh we filtered it and <clears throat> one of my first questions is well why why yeah, did you filter exactly. it um, the minute you filter you, you change it and that's yeah it's, so and it's how do you know what to that. filter out yeah like what are you filtering and why like what's the reason behind that and now you changed exactly you manipulated the data that's what happened and that sounds mean when I say that first, so I try to ease my way into it. <laughs> but but you just got to call it as it is. Yeah, I mean, it's manipulation. Line, you filter something, you change it, you modify it, and right. uh, I mean, you just you can't trust it after that point. So Phil's got a question. How often do things get? Oh, yeah, edited? I'll read my own questions. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Asshole. No, no, no. Go ahead, Kenny. Just go. No, no. Go ahead, man. You got it. This is your show now, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, I need a drink after being called a bitch. Um, <laughs> all right. How often do you get edited in a way that you don't necessarily agree with the final product, but they did so to make better TV? Honestly, I I don't. I, when when I have when I have the time to sit down and, and go through the the cuts before they air, um, it's it is what it is. I, I we never want never want anything uh, changed. Hello, <laughs> there's your wife. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, chat room. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> chat room. so when it comes down to it, it's yeah. Most of the time, the final cuts, as long as I've gone through them, this okay. is this is me. This is how it is. This so is I guess how maybe compared to the older episodes, um, the older show when you didn't have so much control. I don't know if you can. Now, I mean, I want to put a disclaimer out there just not to put you on the spot because I know oh, NDAs and shit like that. Sometimes you can't say something. So maybe about the like the original Ghost Hunters. Um, was there any episodes maybe that came out and you're like not too happy with the way that was edited? Um, Jeez. Oh, I I don't, you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of it. I'm sure, I'm sure there were some. Uh, and in the beginning, you got to remember, I, I was asked to do television five times. I turned it down. I didn't want to be on TV. And uh, it's just not something I ever thought, first off, would would be well received. And to be honest, I never really wanted to lose that that privacy with my, with my right. family or anything. Um, so I'm I'm sure that it well in the beginning there there was a huge learning curve because you just right. you know and you get to the point where the cameras are always rolling so you just forget they're rolling and you just you do stupid shit let's be honest um, you say stupid things and everything else but um, yeah I just I can't think of any off the top but I'm sure there's been some I see uh, I'm gonna put this up from my i'm sorry i'm taking her job she's yelling oh, at me oh my goodness so my friends the spooky science sisters asked is there any oh i'm sorry wait you read your own question damn it <laughs> no no i can't read that one it's, okay it's, all right I'll, I'll keep going is there any piece of equipment or technique that you think should no longer be used by paranormal investigators uh, i can well, give you a bunch <laughs> i mean there's there's a lot of equipment and techniques that i won't use I won't judge anybody for them using. I, I think everybody doing things their own way helps uh, helps push things forward. Um, but I don't care for things like the spirit box. I don't care for stuff like that. I think, uh, and there's also what like the obelisk and things where words get programmed into. And and tell me how a ghost is supposed is supposed <laughs> to know that if he gets a device to two point eight, it's going to give off this word. It just makes no sense to me. It's stupid. Um, you know that dumbass ghost radar thing on your phone. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God! It's it's there's there's a lot of stupid devices out there oh. that I do not like. I do, I'll never use. And uh, yeah, so there. Yeah. I'm trying not to pull any punches. It's just they're stupid. Good. Now, and you you don't have to pull punches. You can say what you want on this show. Um, it's only monitored by me and producer Donna. So, uh, but usually I say this to you. I don't say it on air. Right. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't so worry. No one's listening. Just stupid. 
<laughs> 57 other people <laughs> that are currently watching. Um, <clears throat> so, On the SLS ca uh, camera, I do not like it. I do good. not. I, I think it, it can easily be manipulated, misconstrued. I think it picks up on things. I, it, don't get me wrong. There's been some neat things I've seen from it, but um, I think there's some people out there that are working on much, much more interesting devices that I think can do, do more, uh, whether it be uh, different radar type systems and, and things like that. Um, right. You know, like I've been dealing with uh, Scott Greenwald and, J and Jeff Conkle. I think they're working on some really neat, neat equipment that can help push the field forward. The thing with equipment, um, well, bef before I get there, um, I want to comment the, about everybody doing their own thing. I, I kind of disagree that it moves, moves the, well, it depends on their, what their own thing is. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've seen people do stuff that's so, so wrong. Yes. And, yeah. and I think that hurts, that hurts you, that hurts your, this hobby. Like, I know you've called a field. Don't get upset if I call it a hobby. I just call oh, it. Hey. That's what I do. But, cool. um, I, I think it really hurts the hobby because it's, if you're doing something so wrong, like people are putting out, maybe, maybe for instance, one of the gadgets, if they put out the Ovilus or even the, the ghost radar app yeah. and they're putting it out and they're saying, this really works. And my first question, all right, how demonstrate how let's, let's prove this. That's what, I, that's what I was saying. How do, how yeah. do the ghosts know that getting it to 2.8 is going to give off this word? It just makes no sense to me. Yeah. I mean, so if, if I see like a group going into a private residence and they, they whip out their phones, they whip it out. Whip um, it. They whip out their phones and they're like, Hey, we have this app and it detects ghosts. And they're telling the homeowners this. That I think hurts the field, and yeah. I think that's and that's something that was asked asked of me uh, over the years, uh, you know, with uh, ghost hunters and and all this other stuff. If you know, if we feel like all these new teams getting involved in the field is, is a good thing, and I think I can answer that saying I think a lot of great people have gotten involved in the field, but I also think a lot of bad comes from that as well. Right. Because you, you might get some good, but you're going to get a, a crap load of bad. And so it helps it helps the field for the fact that you're bringing more attention to the field. But then again, you're, you make a great point, Ken, where there's people who go into people's homes and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, they really should not be doing what they're doing because right. they, they're making a mockery of it. They're... You, you don't ever want somebody to look at that and be like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, they brought in their ovulus. They got all this. Now I got a demon in my closet. It's it, it's it's silly. It makes no sense. And it does. It does hurt the field. And it, it's potentially dangerous. Um, it, it can pose a danger to that family. You, uh, you know how many times we've been called into places because families have, have dealt with somebody and they're, you know, they told me that I, I've got this demon here or or you get the other people who. Oh my God! They they said I had a haunted mirror, so they took it. Well, yeah, okay, but it's on eBay now. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. Oh, what's that a? <laughs> Wait, a haunted mirror? What? what well, I just I mean, there's been some. I don't know which which I you're doing. One of them I just mean there's been, there's you you see that, and that's and because right. people you know jump in, and or you got the people trying to charge thousand dollars to to go in and investigate, and we've always done this for you free a fee. I don't I've never charged anything even long before the show. Um, and so, I mean, the, the, yeah, it's just, there's definitely a lot of, a lot of bad that comes from right. all that attention of trying to, to get the name out there. And you, you also get the people who use it as a, as a, a means to try to screw people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bob's got a question. You want to take this one, Jay? <laughs> uh, no, you, you know, your show. Your show. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. You can answer it. Uh, <laughs> so uh you see paranormal like skeptic wait so you see paranormal like skeptics like me see ufos yes they are unidentified flying objects but it doesn't mean it's aliens so 100%, thermal, 100%, thermal doesn't mean ghost you just can't explain it oh i guess he's asking like is that, is that what you mean so somebody sees thermal yeah, well, i mean if, if yeah. i see something walk by on the camera i i'm not going to automatically assume that that's that's a ghost uh, of course but where i like where he says you know uh paranormal paranormal skeptics like him see ufos and it's and that's another thing that drives me crazy people automatically say it's ufo it's aliens no mm -hmm. it's just an unidentified flying object 
I mean, right. it, so it doesn't doesn't have anything to do with alien. Of course, if you stop it and it's aliens, then and there's your uh, proof on it. But uh, okay. yeah, so when it comes down to thermal heat and picking up things, no, it's you, you're not automatically assuming that that's a ghost, and that's that's something. And you and I have talked about that a lot, Ken. Where I don't automatically assume that because this thing has has moved through there that it's it's a ghost, it's a spirit, it's uh, or a demon by any means. <laughs> ah, Daniel Wise. Uh, I just finished a PhD studying American ghost hunting. R what? Ghost hunting? A PhD in American ghost hunting at UVA. I wrote about the ghost hunting boom after Ghost Hunters first aired. Jason, what sources shaped your approach to investigating back in those days before the reality shows? Oh, back when I was young. Jeez. Back, yeah, back, back, when early. back when I was a, a youngin. Way. <laughs> Right after they yeah. invented the wheel. <laughs> Honestly, I never. Yeah, I know. Jeez, well, that was that was real nice. Of you, man. <laughs> uh, honestly, I had never really thought much of the paranormal. My, of course, my mom, my my dad had experience when I when I was little, and uh, but it was never really anything that that was brought up much in our home. Um, I had some experiences when I was in my my late teens, getting into my my twenties, which is sort of how taps became taps it was originally rhode island paranormal society because i was trying to understand how that was possible but when you i mean the internet was kind of new at the point but when you'd go and you try to research anything everything was a ghost these little dust particles that somebody take a picture outside and it's an orb oh my god it's a ghost <laughs> and that's not what i felt i i never and I, I never felt that i've always been one of those people where I like to to hands on to figure it out myself, and so I just tried to understand how how these things were possible, and I still am trying to understand it. And from there, I, I ended up meeting up with Steve not long after. And most people don't realize that I've known Steve longer than than I've known Grant or anybody else. Um, and from there, I mean, we just tried figuring it out. So that's kind of what shaped me and threw me into this field. Um, and since then, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm like I'm still going. I'm still trying to figure it out. God knows if I ever will in my lifetime. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I know. I mean, I keep. Uh, you saw my library. I, I constantly read. I constantly research, and I still, you know, I'm I'm still trying to find answers, and I still go out. You know, like it's not like I sit here and think, oh, I'm not going on any ghost hunts or anything like that. I still go out because I want to see, you know, what there is to it. And, yeah, and I mean, the first time you and I met. It was you and your wife and going back again when we were young. And uh, it was, we were at the uh, Penn State. Uh, Eastern Penn State. State. Yeah, Eastern State. Penn Eastern State, yeah. Um, and I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great place to check out and stuff. And there's always some neat things going on. But, um, but yeah, you were, you were involved and in, you were really trying to look into, you know, is any of this real? Is it, yep. and I think that's important. It, that was it really is. back in my ghost hunter days. I had my own ghost hunting group so it was before i totally flipped onto the skeptical evil dark side <laughs> it's not, there's, there's no evil dark side oh i know, I, know I, I think i think it's because i think it should be respected because it, there's a lot of potential for for help when it comes down to trying to figure out answers and i think that's important that's an important message i mean we need to work together not not against each other i'm yeah. not i'm not out to make someone look stupid well i mean there's one or two maybe because <laughs> they deserve it but <laughs> you know for the most part i am not out to make anyone look bad or stupid i'm out to help like when i put out the information that i that i learn i'm not doing it to say haha i'm doing it to say hey this is what i found you know look at this maybe learn from it and do better the next time you go out well, and you and I have talked so much about that through the, through the years, and you know, I've even discussed having you on the show, and uh, you know, in in future episodes and stuff, because I think I think it's great and because you can do it in a respectful manner, and it's not about you know me saying you're wrong, you're saying you no, it's about us working together to come up with with the solution and try to right. figure out what's what's truly going on. Because yeah, different different pairs of eyes, different thought processes, different. Really? biases um i mean it's, it's, it's biases are usually a bad thing but if you get a whole bunch of people together not everyone's going to have the same biases and you can look at something differently 
And well, think of it like this, man. I'm a plumber, so we got light <laughs> flickering in a house and everything else. I it, maybe it's a short, whatever else, but I'm not going to go dig into that wall to try to figure out or automatically right. assume that a ghost is flicking on an awful light miraculously without moving a switch. Um, to, to let me know he's there. Uh, have an elect electrician comes in, they, right. they tell you what the problem is. We did a case in New Jersey uh, about two years ago, uh, Mario Cerrito, great, great family. Uh, and we were able to find out that the plug socket, one of the plug sockets in the house had, it was broken and it was sending high EMFs through the entire house. Now EMFs, some people will sit there and say, ah, it's ghost. No, no. High EMFs, there's a whole separate hypersensitivity to it and also high doses of it near your head for a long period of time can cause nausea, fatigue, hallucination, paranoia, skin, uh, all, the, all those issues. Well, we, we had electricians come out and look, look into it. They fixed, they fixed the wires. Um, no, no more high EMF issues in the house going on or anything like that. But I mean, Mario, I still I talk to the family. They don't have any more problems going on in the house. Now, is that what solved everything going on? I don't know. I'm not an electrician by any means, and I can only tell you to to my knowledge of of what, but uh, but it resolved that there there was no no ghost issues. Okay. Huh. Uh, Shelly has a question. What did you think of the Crescent Hotel? I thought the Crescent Hotel was beautiful. Um, a lot of people don't. So what really happened there? Um, the first night we got there, uh, we decided we we're going to stay up late. I'll, you know, so we decided we're going to hang out, play poker, do whatever. All crashed about 5 a.m., 6 a.m. The building was struck by lightning, caught on fire. Um, it blew out the electrical. It blew out the fire alarms. Um, <laughs> so this, old, this poor old guy had to walk to everybody's door and knock on the door and <clears throat> you know tell us the fire was going on. Wow. So, uh, I mean, you can ask Dustin, ask everybody. It was, it was just crazy. So, uh, yeah, fire trucks <laughs> showed up. Um, it's such an incredible place, but it was just one thing after another was going on there through the time we were there. And then, then of course, the a bunch of parts of it were flooded because because of the electricity and I mean the fire. It was just insane. So, wow. but I, I, it was such an incredible place. Wow. All right. So let's see. What do we? Oh, what are your thoughts on peer review? How would you like to see it implemented if you do like it? <laughs> so you only have to do question two if you like it. <laughs> well, I mean, what's uh, I mean, so peer review is basically when you publish a work and not um, not to be confused with your friends, but peer review is basically when you publish a paper and or article and other people in that field that have knowledge in the areas that you wrote about, look at it and review it and say, OK, this is either this is good. This is solid research or Here's some things that we picked out that are mistakes. You need to correct this. You need to correct this. Um, usually with uh, academic papers or journals, when uh, you publish a paper, it goes through a peer review process of several people that you don't you don't know. You don't get their identity, but they're they're professionals in that field. And they look at your paper and they review it and they tell you whether it's OK or it needs work. And they tell you what to work on. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great to be implemented. And, you know, honestly, I think uh, whether it's other investigators or whether it's skeptics, I think things like that would be great to get out there and have different people write their thoughts on it. So you can see, like we were saying earlier, so you can see it through others' eyes. You can yeah. see how they're they're perceiving it. And it's, it's basically, I guess, when uh, it, 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 I guess, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Um, informal form of peer review is when uh someone sends me a photo like a ghost photo oh yeah and i look through it and i have a background in photography so i have i have the qualifications that i can look at this and say all right well i see this i see this i see this this is not something that's uh unexplainable this is explainable and this is why um i hate photos i hate photos <laughs> no because, let me explain you know, i love when people come i love meeting people and them showing me things but a photo is like reading one page in a novel. I know nothing that led up to it. I know nothing that happened after it. It's just that one picture. So it's so tough to say anything when it comes down to somebody showing you one picture with something. Right. Again, it'd be different if it was a series of pictures or, or something, but it's tough. I mean, wouldn't you agree? One, uh, yeah. A yeah. picture is like one page in a novel. It really so is. A photo to me, 
and in, I think mostly because of, of the background that I have, like I can look at a photo and for the most part, not a hundred percent because I don't want to dig myself a grave here. Um, but for the most part, I can pick out some details that m- normal people that don't have a background won't see. Yeah. So I can, I can relay that information. I can explain it. I, I can replicate it. And that's one of the things I love doing. I mean, uh, and, and I think sometimes I annoy the shit out of my wife because <laughs> I get on a kick and I'm like, oh, I'm going to recreate this picture. And I rearrange the entire house because I need to set it up just like this photograph and, and duplicate it. And most of the time I put everything back the way it's supposed to most. Um, not all. I don't. But, I don't believe that. Oh, I'm gonna ask the wife. <laughs> I'm I'm turning her mic off. Uh, oh, he arranges the house all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. But but tell me, but, but Kenny, when it comes down, I mean, re- recreating a photo, it's like when somebody shows up with a photo of orbs. I mean, I can turn off the light, slap a pillow, snap snap a yeah. picture, and create it again. Yeah. So or go outside on on when it's uh, you know it's a little moist Snow outside or whatever yeah. or bugs. And, and catch orbs all, all night long. So uh, and I so, agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I, um, and I'm actually getting around to agreeing with you because it's, it's when you're talking about a photograph, you're talking about usually one sixtieth of a second or one thirtieth of a second. And that's it. That's all you get. You all heard that here. Kenny. Agree <laughs> yeah. <with me. laughs> There's the first one. Write that um, right down. Uh, it is not. No, I, I, I got to mark the date here. On <laughs> April 16th, 2021. <laughs> at approximately 9.42 p.m. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure people are going to play this clip on social media forever now. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I'm right there with you because it's it's like you get that fraction of time, and then you usually get the person's perspective, and they yeah. already have it. And I'm not saying bad about them, but they usually have a rehearsed description well, going because they've said it so many times with so yes. many people and mm-hmm. as they said it to people a lot of people might have given them their oh well that definitely looks like this or and that each time they hear that it embeds it it makes it a little more it's a little stronger and right. stronger and stronger so when they bring it to you they're already locked into their belief yes and and, and when i say no <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the 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 anger and the hate that swells within them um and then there's great stories. I, I'll tell you one later because it's kind of long, but about that, where somebody was getting a picture approved by dozens and dozens of ghost hunters. And then they asked me and I was able to explain it. And whew, they didn't like it. I, mean, I mean, getting the picture approved, it's like becoming a certified ghost hunter. I mean, none of this is possible. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. To me. Uh, it's like, you know, and, and I've, I've had people do that. Send me these things. Hey, you can make a killing if you did this TAPS online course and made people certified. Yeah. How am I going to make anybody yeah. say, first off, I'm not out to screw anybody out of money. Secondly, I'm not out. It's just, it makes no sense. How am I going to make you a certified ghost hunter? It, <laughs> I don't know. The whole idea is stupid. Uh, I've written about that several times and it's just, and I've taken the classes. I have a diploma that says I'm a parapsychologist. I didn't earn that shit. I, was I got one up there, man. I got there one up there. I know. I so was like, drunk off my ass. But hey, you know. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's just so. so let's get this question from John out of the way because mm-hmm. he's a nerd and and he should know the answer. Who would win in a lightsaber duel between Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson and me? <sighs> Kenny, I've seen you with a, with a lightsaber. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> yes, you have. I'm going to go. I mean, Neil's a little older. It's uh, I think you can take him over in the court. Yeah. Oh, Neil. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. I think you can take him. And I'd be ready. I'd be ready. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's ready to go. Oh, yeah, you can't. You can't do it with the ring lights on. <laughs> Funny thing, depending on how far we are away, if if I get the gunpowder and start loading that thing up, um, I might be able to get to you first before you get to me. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I got the uh, horn. I got. <laughs> 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 uh, Steve Kruger, uh, has the producers ever forced you to use equipment like the handheld hydrometer, humidity, and temperature meter used in the early years of Ghost Hunters? Nobody's ever forced me to use anything, and I mean, you've known me long enough to know that I I would never accept that. <laughs> um, it's no, I've always that's the thing. I've always done what I want to do, how I want to do it. And it was part of me even agreeing to do the show in the first place was, uh, you know, Craig Belligian, great guy uh, said, uh, 
goes, I don't want to change anything because I had met with a bunch of production companies and Craig was the only one who sat there and said, I don't want to change anything. I just want to send cameras with you. I don't care if you catch something or not. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so great. You, want to spend, you want to spend your money on having a bunch of guys, uh, guys and girls walk around, sit in a room with me for eight, 10 hours, whatever. And, whatever. Uh, okay. Yeah. And I think you saw that because there were a lot of shows that have come and gone. And it was you know, some of those shows used to, they would give their evidence over to the production company. The production company would tell them what they found. Right. I mean, was, even in our contract, the production company couldn't touch our evidence. And uh, that was ours. And we were able to also take the production tapes as well to see if we we're able to catch anything. If we caught something on our camera, was it possibly better on there? So we we're able right. to go through that stuff. Very cool. Uh, all right. So, oh my. How do you, I'm sorry, Doriva? Is that how you say that name? Doriva? I'm going to go with that. I, I hope I hope I got it right. Eastern State Penitentiary is cool. Have you ever investigated at Laurel Hill Cemetery or West Laurel Hill Cemetery? No, I've always avoided cemeteries for the purpose of, first off, if I go there and if I ever did claim to catch anything at a cemetery, I would have to worry that now it's going to be a place where you know some people may go and vandalize or or think it's cool to go and ghost hunt and things get damaged instead of a place right. being respected respected um and also to be honest i mean people are dead for days before their bodies end up in a cemetery i just i think the whole creep factor of knowing that you're walking around where people are buried under you and the whole zombie concept and everything else <laughs> is what what creeps people out when it comes to cemeteries okay. i don't i don't think there's really any reason to be any higher activity when it comes to a cemetery you know when, when i was back in the early ghost hunter days my ghost hunting days like we went to cemeteries and then you gradually get that idea like all right well why why if people are already dead before they get here you know what and I'll, i'd be a liar if i didn't say we did as well i remember steve and i heading heading to uh cemeteries and uh and, but then it's one of those things that you just like first off you're outside you're dealing with all this contamination uh voices i mean there's people walking around you whether i don't care where you are you're still you hear people uh, cars whatever animals uh, you name it uh so right. it's just it's yeah i don't know, waste of time all right get one more question in and then i have two questions that i want to talk about because i've been asked dozens of times about them and then because we're getting close to the end of your uh your time here so i don't oh, want to keep you it's already gone but it's gone by fast yeah. Well, that's because we're so awesome. <laughs> Time flies. Okay. Daniel says, Jason, what is your opinion on the investigative techniques of Zach Packett? <laughs> uh, just kidding. I know that will never get answered, but we can all agree the man is entertaining. <laughs> well, honestly, I, I've never personally met Zach. Um, I've talked to him on the phone a couple of times. And uh, when I was coming to do a uh, ghost nation at travel channel, I got on the phone with him just out of respect. I mean, he's been with Travel Channel, and, uh, and we're we're sh showing up on that network. And I talked to him, and he was he was great. He was he was like, "Hey, you know what? Welcome aboard. Happy to have you." And uh, so I've spoken to him a few times. I haven't watched Ghost Nation. Um, I mean, Zach's doing things the way he feels is is right. Him and his team, and uh, and we're doing things the way you know, we we feel is right. So respect. Bottom line, I think that's uh, that's the only thing I can say about that. Okay, everybody knows my opinion. <laughs> um, I'll leave it at that. I mean, <laughs> they already know you can see some articles. All right, uh, do we we can take one more question? Uh, oh, Aaron, hey, Aaron. <laughs> hey, hey, Iran. If there, if this wasn't asked already, if you could design a piece of equipment that would, that, oh, what would it be? I'm sorry. What, what would it do? Oh, geez. Piece of equipment. If I could design a piece of equipment, um, I would do a lot of different things. I think we're talking like Iron Man, Marvel Universe, where you just have a computer, you can build whatever you want. Oh well, geez, then give me a 360 thermal camera with a 360 <laughs> regular cam. Oh, yeah, 360. Uh, well, yeah, 360 Zero Lux cam, a 360. Uh, it's nice. Yeah, I mean, we we'd, we'd have a shitload of cameras all doing the same. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. But we'd also have omnidirectional uh, audio systems. I think I would love to be able to sit in a in a controlled room 
in a so-called the most haunted place in the world, wherever, I mean, where these people claim that nobody will stay at night. That's bullshit. <laughs> um, you give me one of those, hey, give me that equipment. Just let me sit there and see if anything happens. No outside contamination or anything. And, and right. I mean, I'd be happier than a pig and shit with that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's, that's my ideal situation. I would love to be in a similar, similar situation where it's like, this has a reputation for being, so active like everything happens here and you won't be dis disappointed and be able to go there set up my own controls so i can control the entire environment and then just sit and wait well and that's the thing i love when people are like oh well nobody will stay here twenty five thousand dollars nobody will stay in here for the night i'm like you haven't asked me yet yeah right i'm, I'm there. there guarantee i'll be leaving with 25 grand <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. like, yep. damn right yeah yeah so, all right, we, we got a couple minutes left before you go. So I'm going to ask two two questions. Boxers or briefs? <laughs> I wear boxer briefs. That's what I wear, too. So best, of, best of both worlds, brother. <laughs> See, we are alike. <laughs> <laughs> so first one's easy. Second one is probably going to be the the more, and, and I gave you a heads up before the oh, show. But also, let's let everybody know. I've never once, in all the time we've known each other, asked you to let me know ahead of time any questions you were ever going to ask. Right. I've never asked. I've never asked you to be filtered on anything. Yes, and I, I, yeah, I can second that. That I did not give him like a heads up. Like, hey, this yeah. is what I'm. Because I've always any question you what it is. You're going to ask. Yeah. I'm going to answer how I can. I'm going to ask. Because you know what, I did have a couple people. Like, well, I had a bunch. Like, I, I really didn't expect this to be such a, uh, and, and no offense, but a big deal. Mm -hmm. But once I put the announcement out, holy shit, dude! I got so many messages. And some of them were like, how the hell did you land that? How did you get him to come on your show? What is, what's going on? And I was like, dude, it was his idea. <laughs> like, this was literally your idea. Um, I, te I texted, yeah I, I, yeah. I told you a couple months ago on the phone. I was like, yeah, exactly. You had me on the show. And then, so, and then, I've, never and then ducked, I've never ducked from anything, man. It's, it is what it is. And then uh, a few people said, oh, well, you're going to, are you going to ask him the hard questions? Or are you going to ask him like, oh, ask him this, ask him that? I said, yeah, but. You got to remember, like I promote this show as a, a discussion show, like everybody from different beliefs can come and we discuss it. No one's a dick. So I'm not going to I'm not going to change just because if I have different different beliefs than he does. I'm well, I've always, told you, you can, I've always told you, you can ask me anything. It's just the way you ask me is going to set the tone of the, of the right. whole conversation. Exactly. So I wanted to ask, and this is for my 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 spooky science sisters that are out there. Um, there was a episode, and I forget, I think it was at the Stanley, where the you had a glass, a drinking glass, that yes. cracked. And yep. a, when you watch the show, it makes it look like spooky kind of thing. But from what I'm hearing, that there was a backstory to that. There was a different story to that. That it wasn't something, like it, the show makes it kind of seem like, Oh, it was something in the room that made it happen. It was a spirit or something like that. But see, I don't know. We see, we tried to. All right. So the weird thing I will say, the closet door in the room opened up a couple different times. Um, now, is that spirit? I don't know. You're up your elevation. I mean, you got windows cracked. Who knows? Right. Um, the glass cracking was weird because it cracked from the inside out. Now, the only thing that we we could think of was i mean you, you've got you've got water you've got ice cube ice cubes mm -hmm. i don't know i can't i can't explain it was what was it was i creeped out i'm i'll be honest and sit there and say that i acted perfectly fine on camera but i did think about changing rooms um okay. because i just didn't feel comfortable in there it was just one of those things where i i just didn't feel comfortable because i didn't know what what had caused it okay. um so what I heard from from other sources, um, and don't ask me, and I'm not. It's not like I'm hiding. No, sure I don't remember you know what that. sources said this, but that the the glass had actually come right out of the dishwasher, so it was hot, and then they put ice water in it, and then because of the temperature difference, it cracked. Well, I can tell you, it didn't come out of any dishwasher. Uh, it was one of the glasses that was in the room. It's one of the ones that usually you have for the oh, bathroom, like with a cover on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, so that that's not correct. Um, I I believe I did have ice water in it. Okay. Um, 
because you really can't drink alcohol up there. Because let me tell you, uh, <laughs> 8,000 feet above sea level, one drink equals three. Um, but yes. no, so, exactly. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll have to go up there sometime. Maybe a, maybe a cheap date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't I will put out say, on the first date, Jason. <laughs> uh, I think after after there you would, um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will. So yeah, so it, it definitely wasn't a dishwasher glass, uh, anything like that. It was it was in the room prior. But okay. can I sit there and tell you that it was paranormal? No, and even even then, I didn't I didn't automatically claim it was paranormal. But I will say that I felt uncomfortable in the room after that. But it was more, I think, just like, well, friggin' closet door open and closed and this glass cracks and mm -hmm. you know, all this. So you, you don't feel safe. You don't. Um, but uh, yeah. So. OK. And the last question. <sighs> Collar gate. So this okay. is the biggest thing um, that I've gotten messages about today. And just they, people wanted me to ask you about this and just to get your take on it because they've heard it I, I guess i guess most of the people that listen to my show and i've noticed there's a dramatic increase so there are probably a lot of people that don't listen to my show yes. but the regulars they are now wow <laughs> <laughs> but this is so funny the regulars that that come by they were curious they wanted to hear it from you like what your thoughts were so basically the idea if, if you're not aware of it i'm you're aware of it but if I'm they're really not aware of it there was an episode. I think it was a live episode, right? Mm -hmm. It was a live episode. It was Fort, where, uh, I believe it was Fort Delaware, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, Again, and there was 180 the, episodes, guys. Give me a little. Bro. I know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to ding you on that. <laughs> uh, keep si sipping that drink. <laughs> um, so in in the episode, um, Grant's walking around with a jacket on, and there's a thing with the collar goes down a couple of times and yep. it's, it, it's been a big thing. It's been, it's called collar gate. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've, I've seen uh, things that people have posted on it. Right. And, and things I've like seen it. I've looked at the footage. I have my own opinion of it, but what, what are your thoughts? Because you were there. So if you, if you wouldn't mind, can you, no, I mean, I'll, like I told you, I'll never, okay. I'll never talk a question. So, Grant and I really don't talk much anymore. I haven't seen him in a long time. I um, wish him the best. When it comes down to that, it didn't happen to me. Grant claimed to have an experience. Um, so I can I can only base it on it was Grant's experience. This is what he said. You know, I I believe him. Um, yeah, I looked, and, and some people I, I saw some people are like. Jason looked and there was a string in there and he hit it. No, if, I looked. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see anything. Um, okay. Do I think he manipulated it? No, I don't. But the world's going to have to draw their own conclusion on it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I can just say what I saw. If it happened, it never happened to me. And, th and that's that's the thing. So, um, yeah, it's, okay. it's tough because I'm not. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I'm not saying, yeah. So, right. I, it's, I know. It's one of those things where I, I respect everybody's, everybody's beliefs on that. But I, I have to say, I mean, Grant was always a, a very stand up person. So I don't, I don't think that would ever be something that he, he would, he would do. Okay. Fair answer. Okay. So that's, it's about it. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all I, I wanted to ask the question because yeah. I wanted to ask. And I mean, and believe me, if, I felt if if I of course if I knew that there was something I'd have no problem saying it. I, I mean we just it's not like we talk anymore. We we went our own separate ways. Uh, you know I I chose to do another show because I wanted to stick with uh, with uh, D uh, Dave and Steve and, and the team and right. and he chose to go his route and I think that was just where we decided that you know it was best that we went our separate ways. Okay. Cool. All right, man. I, we're in an hour, so I don't want to keep you any longer because I know you 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 made an hour. You made time for me, and I oh, appreciate, I appreciate that, man. Especially with everything going on with yeah. family and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, and I, yeah. I do I appreciate you having me on, and, uh, and believe me, like I said, it's uh, it's a pleasure. I got to come on, and do this again. And, yes, you know, yeah. I'd be happy to answer everybody's questions, man. It's great to talk with you and then talk with the wife as well. Awesome. We'll schedule another time. We'll, we'll get together another time where you can stay for the full two hours and we'll just shoot the shit for the whole thing. 
I said, well, when I get down your way, maybe we'll do yeah. it in person right there. Absolutely. You you give me a call when you're down this way and I'll uh I'll help I'll out anywhere I can. In the background and stuff. <laughs> you can come, yeah, you can come visit and yeah, there's this gun in the shadow box I want to I want to open up <laughs> You ain't getting your hands on that yeah, bitch. We'll see. <laughs> all right, all right. right. So all right. Jason is you, not you be allowed safe in the and, house. Uh, <laughs> what? What was that? I said Jason is no longer allowed in the house. <laughs> no, right. but Thank you very much. Uh, everyone stay tuned. I'm staying for the rest of the, the hour, but Jason, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. And, uh, and best of luck or, and, and, you know, all my best with everything. Um, and, uh, take care and I'll talk to you. Appreciate it, bro. Stay safe and, uh, best to your, the wife as well. And we'll talk soon. All right, but take all it right, easy. Bye bye. All right. That was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. That was really good. And, uh, it's it's nice when you can talk and this is actually like <clears throat> I guess this would be the the poster child of this show because it's it's like there's a ghost hunter he's a para celebrity he's he has his different beliefs that are obviously or, or some of them are obviously different than mine but not all of them we do come together on some of these and we can talk and have a civil conversation uh sit here for an hour we can drink we can hang out and talk and even disagree. And I, I knew we were going to disagree on a few things. And uh, it's nice because I can bring it up and he doesn't get mad. You know, he doesn't stomp or, or you know, pout or, or go away. And every time we've talked, and that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up too. And I did in the beginning of the show that we do talk on the phone um, f um, frequently. Uh, and we, we discuss things. He brings up ideas. I bring up ideas. I, Hey, I call him sometimes and say, Hey, you know what? I caught this. I have a suggestion. Maybe, you know, try this or try that. And we have a nice conversation and it's really, really good. Um, so like I said, I'm going to, Oh, Darren says, I enjoyed that. Hope he comes back. He's going to come back. He's definitely going to come back. And, and tonight there's things going on in the background with family and stuff. So he, that's why he couldn't stay uh, for the entire show, but I'm really happy that he did. Um, he did put us, uh, set aside an hour, um, so that we could chat and have this, uh, nice conversation. So everyone else that joined, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it, like I said, I'm going to stick around for a little bit. If you guys have more questions, pop them up in the chat room and, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But if there are no more questions, then I'll cut out early and I'll start oh. drinking really good. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. There was a lot, a lot of new people. I hope you guys, um, uh, it was a great show, Mr. Equalizer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope, I hope, uh, a lot of people stay around and, and, and I saw a lot of new people, a lot of new names, um, <laughs> big numbers, like a lot of numbers. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, holy crap. You no pressure, but I'm glad <laughs> everyone's hanging out and I hope you guys stick around. Um, and I hope that if you're more, a fan of ghost hunting shows and more on the belief quote unquote believer side that you see by this show that not all skeptics are assholes that some of us are nice and we can be respectful and then we can have a conversation and, uh, and try to help each other. So, all right, do we, Oh, we got some more comments. Do a Kenny and Donna show. <laughs> Shut up, Diana. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, we would have a good we, show. We would have a good show. Um, but if we do like a if we do a show, it'll be a K and D adventures kind of show. Ooh. And uh because we did do a lot of live shows during the beginning of the pandemic where everyone was stuck in quarantine. So and uh any more Paris celebrities lined up. <laughs> Great energy tonight. Damn it, stop saying that word. <laughs> uh actually tonight's guest, um, having Jason on was um last minute uh i talked to him last night i was supposed to have another guest on tonight but he had to reschedule for next week so that's going to be uh that should be fun too but i sent a text to jason last night at the uh advice advisement of my wife um <laughs> and he was able to work things out where he could get on so he actually let me on let me know today that he could get on for an hour so that's when we set it up actually when i put the announcement out um, this afternoon, that was when I, I learned it. I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. Anytime, Jason, it was, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what does Chuck say? Such a dick. <laughs> he skips my comments. Wait, uh, I didn't skip them. 
That's see, it's out of my hands. Producer Donna is in charge of the uh, the questions. So he doesn't like me throwing shit on the screen. I can't help it, Chuck. Just my personal yeah, he's a big <laughs> thing. I support. That's it. Uh yeah, a TV show. Nah, I don't know about that. I don't know. It's come up. It's actually come up a lot lately um, about doing a, some kind of TV show where it's a skeptical kind of show. And on the TikTok accounts that I have, I've been getting a lot of feedback from that asking, like, you know, we should do a, a I should do a skeptical show. But I don't know if people are ready are for ready it. for that. I don't know if networks are ready for that. I don't know if there's an audience that's big enough for the networks to be interested in something like that. I think it would be great. And the idea came up actually for like a crowdfunded um, like YouTube series or something like that. And that would be fun. But I don't know how much work that would involve. And I just don't I, I don't have the time for that. Right now. I have so many projects going on that, you know, I'm, I'm literally going from project to project to project until I pass out on the couch. Um, <laughs> literally, uh, Eric Allman, when are you coming back down here? Kenny, got to get you back in the woods with me and the crew. Yo, taken out of context. <laughs> that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of sexy there, Eric. <laughs> uh, but I would love to come out. I miss you guys. Uh, I miss you, man. Um, uh, but you're going to be at, uh, phenomenon, right? Phenomenology, I think, Eric, and we'll, we'll be able to uh, see each other there and, and hook up. And uh oh man, I forgot to I forgot to post a question to Jason. I'll have to ask him later. I don't want to put it on air because it's not solidified yet. It's not scheduled. Mm. So producer Donna is doing a great job. Yes, she is, Carol. She is doing an awesome job. Um, I'm loving it. She is doing great. Jocelyn, I love your TikToks. If you're not familiar with it, I do I have two TikTok accounts. I have one that's under Kenny Biddle 42, and that's more of a skeptical one where I go through um videos uh like uh, par uh what is it haunted tiktok and paranormal tiktok and i look at the videos and i give explanations for them um as best i can and then i also have kenny's mystery museum where i do tiktok videos of the museum things that i have the haunted stuff and not so haunted stuff because i have artifacts from uh like books and magazines and stuff from like uh history that had to do with the paranormal so it's a pretty cool thing. I'm having fun doing it, except, you know, one minute video takes me like 45 minutes to do Sometimes. because I keep screwing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I am horrible when I try to do lines. I'm, I'm much better at this. Oh, we got a question. Hey, Brian Dunning's in the house. Holy shit. <laughs> What's up, Dunning? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, let's see. Where's There's a question, question all the way at the bottom. Oh, John Kennedy. All right, I'll get it. John Kennedy, can the second half be about energy? I'm not getting vickered on this. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to play my commercial because I have to refill. I'm empty. So I'm going to play my, oh, light, whatever. <laughs> late, sorry. You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Sore. <laughs> oh, good one, Brian. I love it. All right. I'm going to play my commercial which is about two minutes long. And then I will be, be right back. Hopefully everyone stays with me and uh, I'm going to fill up and probably pee because I got to empty the tank. So here we go. And commercial. Hey everyone. This is my store based on the theme of science and skepticism. It's here that you can find all kinds of shirts and hoodies, yoga pants, tote bags, the fanny packs. I know you guys love masks and pillows all with science and skepticism as the theme. I even have hoodies for your pets. That's right, your dog or cat can wear one of these things. I also have a general store that sells more inspirational quotes or, you know, drinking stuff because I like that kind of thing. I also have a store set up for our Three Tortured Souls podcast, which we do Saturday nights. You can find shirts and Tim Vickers' favorite drinking vessel, The Mug. I also have a store tailored a little bit more towards my ghost hunting friends, Paranormal by I Am Kenny Biddle. These are shirts and quotes that are a little bit more on the ghost hunting side. Especially this one. Translucent perished beings. You know, ghosts. That's my favorite. So if you're interested, head on over to teespring.com slash stores slash scientific skepticism by IAKB and check it out. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.
Are you tortured by what you see and hear about the paranormal field? Join us as we critically examine and question paranormal claims, science, ghosts, demons, cryptids, UFOs, ghost hunting technology, and much more are all on the table for discussion. Three Tortured Souls is a video podcast that streams live on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 Pacific. All right, we're back. And wow, we still got a lot of people left. That's awesome. I'm glad you stuck around. All right, so what do we got? We got something about Skeptic Show. Cordell says, yeah, Skeptic Show, Skeptic Show. P.S. Thank you so much for the cursed Bell Witch Rocks. And they're going to live beside Ben's Cursed Pebbles. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, that was a burp that kind of wanted to come out but got stuck. It's still in there. It's like right here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that was cool. Cause I sent, uh, Coral, uh, some of my, uh, cursed bell, Witch rocks, um, because I promised her, um, a couple shows ago that I would do it. And I finally did. And it was a pain in the butt Coral, because I had to fill out a, um, customs oh, <laughs> form, custom form because I was yeah, sending yeah. it to Canada. I was like, it's rocks. <laughs> it, it's two freaking rocks. What are you talking about? Uh, but I'm glad you got them. I'm glad you got them and uh, enjoy. Hopefully you don't get cursed um, because I did send uh, several because I took handfuls because once the tour guide in the Bell Witch Cave told us that the um, that the rocks were cursed and that people got really bad luck when they took them home. Of course, I mean, I I bent right down and scooped up a whole bunch, put them in my pocket and then I did it again because <laughs> I was like, they're mine. And I sent some to Ben. Uh, ben Rafford, who gave some to Celestia Ward and uh, Pascal Romero, because the whole scoring the strange uh, crew. So, all right. Mm. You have a question? We have a question. John Michael did. Well, he had a question up there about, do we live in a simulation? But no, John, stop asking me questions like that. <laughs> Although I did like the lightsaber one. Barry Martz. How you doing, Barry? Good to see you. Kenny, do you sell dry fit non-cotton clothing on your Teespring online store? Dry fit non-cotton. That is a question I cannot answer. I don't know. It's whatever is on there. If you go into the store and see, I think it tells you what it is. All I know is that it's the premium tees because I, I they had like the cheap ones and I didn't want the cheap ones because I didn't I don't like wearing cheap T-shirts. Uh, this is one of the shirts, but I get the high quality ones because we can look. It's high quality, but I can we can look. Yeah, <clears throat> I think Donna's gonna look. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm getting yelled at for volunteering her. <laughs> but I'll look that up. You know what? I'm gonna write your name down, and uh, I'll get back to you on that, and see what I can come up with. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. Uh, going down. What is this? Bob Bob says you should talk to Ben about having the skeptical inquirer putting show together. So there was, I, I probably can talk about it because it didn't happen, but like two years ago, I think two years ago, we were at SciCon, which is the science conference that skeptical inquirer puts on in uh, Las Vegas. And we met with a, I think producer from national geographic and they were talking about putting a show together and they had a bunch of us in a room. And I think there's a picture on, on my, I am Kenny Biddle page of all of us together. There was a bunch of us, um, me, um, Susan Gerbic, Mark Edward, Joe Nickel, um, Ross Blotcher from Ono, Ross and Kerry. Uh, and who else? Uh, I know I'm missing somebody and I'm going to get yelled at. 
Um, but we were all in the room. We were talking about different things and, and trying to put a show together. And that was the last I heard of it. Uh, and that was the last anyone else heard of it. Yeah, that was so, like two years ago. Yeah, that was a while ago. So, I mean, it, it's, I don't know if there's there's a market for it. I mean, I think a lot of us would watch a show like that because I think it would be cool to go in there and solve mysteries. But the thing is, a lot of the work we do behind the scenes, like I know, at least from my perspective, it's days and weeks worth of work. And it's, it's mostly me sitting here like this, <laughs> you know, looking at my screens, looking up stuff, researching it, and then occasionally calling people to, uh, to try to get records released or um, get information. So I think of a lot of it is boring. That's why I don't think it would work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. John Michael says, let me rephrase the question. What do you say to someone who believes we live in a simulation? Um, I would say very slowly look for Neo and then I'd walk away. That's it. Maybe the follow, follow the white rabbit. That's a good one too. follow the white, white rabbit down the rabbit hole. But yeah, other than that, I mean, a simulation. I No, I don't, I don't buy that. John Kennedy says my mom has been all about cold spots lately. What's your take on that? Cold spots are cold. That's about it. Um, <laughs> It's it's going to happen. It's really going to happen. It doesn't mean it's a ghost. It doesn't mean because I, I know the prevailing idea is that when a ghost is around, they absorb all the energy energy in the area. And I guess that means thermal energy because it suddenly gets cold in a spot. Uh, the problem is that drafts happen. Um, you're going to have temperature differences in, in the same room because of windows, leaks in windows, doors, what have you. You're going to have cold spots. It's going to happen. Um, if you're not sitting on a piece of furniture, it's eventually going to come to room temperature. And then when someone sits in it, they're going to they're going to heat it up. That's that's the way it works. So I don't think there's anything going on with cold spots. Um, at least nothing that's uh, that that would be attributed to paranormal. Um Dana Wingard says, hey, I'm finding out it's hormonal for women as you get old. What, what is that about? You get older. Menopause. Oh. You get cold. You get hot. Oh. <laughs> cold spot. I was like, what are we? What? What Did we switch topics and I didn't yeah, pay attention? we were on the same line. <laughs> wow. We just didn't get it. Oh, okay. It's hormonal. Okay. Hmm. Some of them. <clears throat> Dave Schumacher, what's up, buddy? Co-host of Three Tortured Souls. Cold spots can be perceived by people due to ambiguous stimuli, not necessarily due to a drop in temperature. Yes. And I think the, the whole idea of cold spots is subjective. Um, you know, like, I mean, if I take a, a, a monster out of the fridge, you know, in the morning, because I don't drink coffee, I drink a monster, it's cold. So that would be cold. Uh, whereas if it's sitting on the, the, the kitchen table all night, it's not going to be so cold, but it's still going to be colder than, you know, the coffee or the toast that just popped up. I, I don't, it's, it's subjective. So I don't, I don't attribute that to a paranormal thing. I think it's just, it's just one of those tribal, uh, it's tribal knowledge. Tracy Valenti, Valenti. Tracy Valenti. I'm sorry. I'm horrible with names. Love the conversation tonight and very impressed with the respect you two have for each other. Do you suggest any strategies to help the rest of us maintain that tone? I find it very easy to get exasperated with woo. Thank you, Tracy. First of all, for the, the, for the, the respect comment. I appreciate that. Um, Jason and I have known each other for, yeah, almost 20 years and we go back and forth. Um, very respectful, have, have conversations. We don't get pissed off at each other. And I guess the, the strategies that I would suggest to you and to anyone else is just remember that, um, rule number three of this podcast is follow Patrick Swayze and be nice. That's, that's, if you don't know, it's, it's a quote from a uh, roadhouse and it's just, it's, it's the embodiment of how you get along with people, how you, progress how you get a conversation started and keep it going you be nice 
yes, I understand how easy it is to get like frustrated or exasperated or just pissed off at someone because they're they're either refusing to listen to you. Sometimes they talk over to you, which really pisses me off. I hate when people talk over me and like I will call you out on it and or leave the conversation. Just walk away. I don't like that. Um, but I get it. And I guess my advice would be just remember that they're coming at it from a different perspective. They're, they're coming at it from a different idea. And I think the best practice is to understand where they're coming from. So like if we're having a conversation and there are certain beliefs that are, that are held by them. I ask questions like, okay, you, you think this, you know, the shadow that you saw down the hall is like a ghost or an entity. Why do you think that? Help me understand. That's probably the best phrase that you can incorporate. Help me understand because it, it, it's not confrontational, but it is. It it forces them to explain their their way of thinking, and then you better understand them, and you can better approach it. Um, so when people help me understand why they think the way they do, then it helps me understand. Okay, well, if I say this or if I say that, maybe we can have a conversation and just you know talk it out. Um, sometimes I say uh, something like, "Oh, well, have you ever thought about this?" And I'll give an alternative explanation for something. Uh, I try to steer conversations more in a way that they come up, the, the other person comes up with the idea, like a, a more rational explanation themselves. As in, like, have you ever thought about other ways? Like, all right, you, you think this is a ghost. What other things can you think of that might cause this to happen, you know, or might cause this experience? So, that's a start. That that's where it starts, and I I've found that approach really helps. It really maintains a good relationship, and it doesn't make you look like the evil skeptic. So I hope that helps. Darren says, "Do you feel that ghost hunting is trying to use theories to substantiate proof rather than using proof to substantiate theory?" <sighs> trying to use theories to yes, I do. Um, I think. Because a good one to actually, a good example is um, uh, quantum entanglement. Now, disclaimer, I am not a physicist. I know very little about quantum physics except for the name quantum physics. <laughs> That's about as much as I know about it. But I have read up a little bit about uh, entanglement, and I've seen that idea immediately immediately uh, adopt it into paranormal theories, which they're not, they're not theories. Um, they're more hypothesis, uh, but uh, they're incorporated by saying, well, you know, if quantum entanglement happens where two things can happen at the same time, like one thing happens here and then it affects uh, another thing like light years away or something like that, then why can't um, a ghost in the past that has a traumatic event, like a murder, um, why can't that happen or affect something that's here now and this and that? So, yeah, I think there's, there's a, a gross misrepresentation about um, theories that are out there or hypotheses that are out there that are adopted for paranormal use. And that's, that's across the board. I mean, you see that with equipment. You see that with um, pictures, video, everything. It's, it's all adopted and justified for a paranormal reason. Ron. Ron says, would you be nice interviewing Zach Baggins? Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, I, it's no secret what I, how I feel about him. Um, but if he agreed to come on this show or if we mutually agreed to come on someone else's show, yes, absolutely, I would be respectful because it's, it's not. <sighs> yes, I talk shit. Um, that's the gamer in me. I definitely talk shit. But um, I usually talk shit when someone deserves deserves it. And I think some of the stuff that he's done deserves it. Um, but if we met, if we got on the same show, yes, I would absolutely uh, be respectful. And we would have, well, at least from my perspective, I would uh, approach this exactly how I approached it with Jason. Um, there's no reason to do otherwise, really. Um, there you go. Oh, Steve Kruger, have you 
ever seen any evidence that gave you pause and seriously ponder the paranormal? So this is a, a weird question because back in my ghost hunter days, I would say yes. Uh, but now, even when I look back on my experiences, I would say, eh, you know, if anything, it would just give me pause and wonder, what is that? Like, I, I wouldn't immediately go to paranormal because to me, that's a conclusion. Like when you say, oh, that was paranormal, you are inserting a conclusion where you have no evidence that uh, to support that conclusion. So if, if anything, if I see something that gave me pause where I, I'm like, you know, in a dark hallway and I'll, suddenly I see something, I'm like, huh, kind of struck dumb, you know, that that kind of look like, huh, what, what just happened? I wouldn't think, did I see a ghost? I would think, what did I see? What was that? And I would immediately go down the hall where where whatever I saw was and see if I could figure out what's going on. So good question, though. Good question. All right. Let's see. John Kennedy, have you ever done an expose on tarot card readers? I read your SI article on hot, cold reading. I did one of those. Huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did. I've done so many articles that sometimes I lose track of what I do, what I did. Um but uh, on tarot cards, no. What well, you know? What I did one. It wasn't for SI. I did one for the James Randi Educational Foundation. Um, so on. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. I did one where I went to a tar a tarot card reader, and uh, you, I went with you, and um, that was the one in New Hope, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Pennsylvania. We went and uh, and I had a very I don't know if I could call it bad um, experience, but I had an experience that I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, there's my F bomb for the day. Huh. Um, I, I was like, I was so disgusted with the way the tarot card reader performed. And that's the only way I can say it performed um, that I, I woke, I walked out of there actually angry um, about what I, what I paid for. Um it wasn't even entertaining. James Randi, educational. I'm trying to find out. Let's see. Educational. Let's see. No, no, no. Let's just go. I with found it entertaining. Yeah. That's okay. It's not your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. I knew this would bite me in the ass. <laughs> So I'm, I'm looking up. I'm trying to find the, uh, let's say, Swift. So I'm going to put the article in. Uh, oh, where's my name? There it is. Kenny Biddle. Ah, there I am. Oh, and there it is. Did a psychic see my future? <laughs> no, it wasn't in the cards. I love the titles I come up with. <laughs> He's laughing at his own shit. I do. I crack myself up all the time. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So I'm putting it in the chat room. So that's my article on uh, my, my tarot card reader experience. And that's just one. So I want to make that clear. That's just one. Uh, I have gone to others. I've sat, I've gone to psychic fairs. And actually, like when there's, when you go to psychic fairs, at least the ones I've been to, sometimes it's like an entire row of nothing but tarot card readers. And I sit for as many as I can afford. So like I usually put aside some money. Um, so I, I'm like, all right, you know, they usually do like, you know, one reading for like $10 or $15. So maybe I can do like four or five in, in at this fair. And that's what I'll do. I'll actually sit down and schedule one and I'll get it done. And then I'll go to the next one, like a half hour later and then half hour later, do another one and just see what they say and compare. And I usually record them. Um, if I, if I can, I ask because uh, Pennsylvania is a two-party state, so you need to ask permission. You can't just secretly do it unless you have a really, really good reason. John Kennedy says, the SI article was about you went to an event and had a background story that you and the others didn't know about. And the lady who lost a son and you didn't want to lie to her, but had told us, had to hold the story. Oh, that was, um, that was, uh, that was, uh, the one we went undercover for. Um, oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, that was a Susan Gerbic uh, sting operation. Yeah, and that, was, that was not a tarot card. That no, was, he was a psych 
Yeah, well, he was a psychic. Like um, like, yeah. Uh, oh, what was his name? Holy crap. The guy with the spandex. You guys know him. He has his own uh, show. No, he had a show for... I don't think that's on anymore. No. I, no. Well, I, I think that's totally <laughs> gone. Um, I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. So I, I went to... remember his name. The background story is... Oh, I'm going to try and look it up. Um, <laughs> the background story is basically that uh, we went undercover at a psychic show. So it was a, a psychic that uh, was in Valley Forge. They went to the convention center. They were putting on a show and I put a team together. There were six of us. We went out undercover with profiles, Facebook profiles that we had no control over. So we didn't actually know what the Facebook profiles were. We didn't get names of our characters until the night before, um, which it's a big operation. It's a lot more involved than what I'm leading, what I'm, describing here because there's so involved but basically we had we we got our characters we were in character the entire time we went to the show we had a backstory we had a very few details and we had to ab lib like a lot of mm -hmm. our stories and we were talking to people at a bar because it was at a casino um we were talking to people at the bar and we're getting these stories from these people and they some of them were like heartfelt stories you know like you really had that like like what you what you said here about a lady who lost a son and i'm listening to it and she's also asking me my opinion and stuff and i'm like oh, i gotta stay in character this is difficult you know because i want to talk to her i want to comfort her and i want to say you know like you know maybe maybe you need to to keep going with the grieving process and and get through this not prolong it and I think that's what a lot of these psychic shows do. They prolong it because they pretend to talk to your loved ones and they prolong the grieving process. They don't let you continue on and finish it. And I think it's, it's, it's horrible. Um, I think it's, it's not beneficial or healthy for people to do that. So, all right, I'm going to keep looking for my, uh, that article and I'll post it in the, uh, the chat room okay. so any more questions no are we good are we up to date we, we are caught up awesome date. um gabe asked a question um this is more for you because i don't uh i forget what event we we're at with you guys but one lady was charging 60 dollars. did you visit her no and i know who you're talking about i do know because uh one of the things i do at psychic fairs or anywhere where there's a, a lot of psychics lined up is that I, I take notes and I take note of how long the sessions are and how much you're charging. And cause just to get an idea, because the more you charge, and this is what I found out. This is my observations. The more they charge, the more, I guess they think that they're, they are good. The more, the more better, the more better they are. <laughs> and unfortunately that translates to the customers because I see a lot of people sign up for the more expensive ones because you get this idea of you get what you paid for. So, Hey, if all these other people are only charging $15, this one's charging 60 and they had this big ass banner with their picture on it, they must be better than the rest of them. And I mean, honest opinion, the reason that one has that big ass banner is because you're paying $60 <laughs> yeah. instead of the 15. So I don't think that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, grief vampires, I agree. Uh, where am I? Let me see. I lost my place here. Um, oh, there it is. $50. So no, I don't go to the expensive ones um, unless I get... Uh, John Kennedy put the link up for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, John Kennedy. I appreciate that. Um, the more expensive one, it depends. Because I'll tell you this, uh, and I don't know if I've ever said this to anyone, um, or at least said it publicly. That person that we're talking about, and I'm not going to name her name because, honestly, I, I she was a it bitch. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we, we, had, we had a conversation. And uh, I'd rather not get into that because, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably lose my shit. Um, anyway, so that particular person that was charging $60, she did show up at a different conference. And 
I had a buddy of mine sit with her and I paid his way. So I paid for him to sit with her. I paid the $60 and well, actually, no, no, I correct myself. I paid half of it and my buddy paid the other half because we were, it was an experiment for both of us. So he sat down and he's got a psychology background and he sat down for the entire session and he got up and he, we walked away a good distance away where we knew that she could not hear us or see us. And he turned to me and said, Nope, she got every single thing wrong. Like everything she, everything that came out of her mouth was wrong. And, uh, I mean, I, there's more to that story and, and hopefully one day I'll write it up, but it was an eye opener, you know, cause it, even the, the ones that are, I don't want to say cheap, but the more reasonably reasonably priced ones. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm getting buzzed. Oh. Reasonably uh -huh. priced ones. They usually get a few things right. And I mean, that's just by chance, <laughs> you know, you're going to get stuff right, but to get everything wrong. I mean, that takes skill. <laughs> uh, Steve says, did she predict you were going to have an issue? Nope. They never do. <laughs> nope. I'll tell you what. I mean, if you don't know me, if I sit down for one of these readings and they don't know me, that's a plus for me because something you have to notice. And do I have, do I have one of my counters? I don't think I do. Not up here. Um, one of the things you have to notice is when you sit down for these readings and, and this is good advice for everyone. When you sit down, Oh, there it is. Count how many questions they ask you. And I've shown this before. This is a little counter. It goes on your finger. It wraps around. So I usually wear it like something like this. And it goes in my hand. So you really can't see it because the band is actually like, uh, it's that clear band. But it's a counter. And the battery's dead on this one. But usually the display has the, uh, the counter. And you just press the big button and it counts up. So every time they ask me a question, I hit the button. And when they ask me questions about like, oh, did you have a sister? Um, did you have a sister to the past? I say, yes, I, I didn't have a sister, never had a sister. And she certainly didn't die because I didn't have a sister. So I'll let the story go on. You know, I'll let them create the story, but they're completely wrong. Uh, and the philosophy behind that, the reasoning behind that is that if they are really talking to my dead relatives they should know i don't have a fucking sister that's it hmm. you know if when they're telling me oh they're standing right over you they're standing over your shoulder and they're talking to me you know it's bullshit but one of the main things i do is keep track of how many questions they ask me and on average they ask about two questions per minute uh and that's what i found over the last couple of years two questions per minute so with a 15 minute session it's at least 30 questions that they ask and that's ridiculous for someone that's it's allegedly communicating with some kind of spirit you shouldn't be asking me questions you really shouldn't you should be telling me things in a statement in a confident statement so that's one of the things that i recommend you can get these on a educational like a teacher website teacher educational websites or something. I, I don't know. I get these like by a pack and I buy like 20 in a pack and it, it's pretty cheap. So it's worth it. John Kennedy says, can we know about the beard mm -hmm. thing yet? This is driving me nuts. No, mm -hmm. you cannot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Bob. Um, <laughs> sorry. That's still under wraps and I won't be disclosing that for quite some time. So I'll, I'll just give you a heads up for the next like 10 shows. You're Don't not going to get an answer, Don't <laughs> but keep trying. <laughs> Robert keys. What's up, Robert? Miss you, buddy. Uh, Jason spoke about parallels in time about hearing voices. And you asked, did he mean the possibility of different dimensional planes? What was the outcome of the ex existence of the disembodied voice he heard? So I'm not sure about the outcome from him, from his perspective, it sounded like to me that because the way he described it, instead of just getting a EVP recording where it's like you ask questions, nobody hears shit, and then you play back the recording and then you hear an, a response. It sounds like they heard the response 
And then when they played it back, they also heard it. That's what I'm, that's what I got from that, which makes me, I mean, from my perspective, that makes me more cautious because, all right, if you heard it, then it was a physical sound. There was something physical that caused the, the, don't get metaphysical on me, but caused the vibrations through the air because that's what sound is, um, that caused them to hear it. So if there was a name or a voice that was heard, somebody said it. So whether it was like a different crew member, not maybe, maybe not the cast, but maybe a crew member or like, you know, microphone guy or, or something that was off in the distance. I don't know. Somebody, you know, had to really pee and then they were off on the corner. <laughs> I don't know, but it makes me wonder like, okay, somebody had to cause that noise. They had to say something in order for them to hear it. Uh, and that that's the logical answer besides going metaphysical or paranormal and just saying, Oh, well, it's a ghost. You can't because there's no evidence to that. There's no data to that. And the reason I'm confident in saying right now that it was probably a person is because that's how we know sound travels. We know voices are caused by living people and it travels down um, through a medium air to our eardrums where we hear it. So that's why I'm confident in saying that. I hope that I hope that uh, answers your question there. Karen Smith. Ha hello. Have you looked at people who work with pendulums? I have looked at them. Yes. Does that answer your question? <laughs> have I looked into it? Yes. Um, and I actually do. I No, I don't have it here. You're um, I do have a pendulum tester. Uh, so I, I usually take it to conferences with me and I'll be taking it to the other conferences that are coming up that I'll be visiting, but it's a, a pendulum inside a pretzel jar. Uh, so it's a clear pretzel, pretzel jar. Wow. That's a tongue twister. Pretzel jar. Pretzel jar. So it's a pretzel jar. That's clear. You can <laughs> see the pen. Shush. You can see the pendulum in it <laughs> and the chain is actually clamped on the top. So I have a, a clamp glued to the lid and the chain is in there, but you can hold the chain. So you can actually pull the chain up taunt and, and hold it. You can ask your questions. And the way it's set up is that if you move the chain on top, it will not transfer the energy, the kinetic energy down the chain into the pendulum and make it move. Um, every time I've had someone who does pendulum work use this tester, they cannot make the pendulum move. And uh, you, it's usually you attribute it to the idiomotor effect. Uh, and when I do watch people use a pendulum, yes, I see their hands moving. I see their arms moving back and forth. I have never seen a pendulum user not move their hands. Um, and I think it's just it's just natural. It's just something natural, whether they mean it or not. And, and I don't want to fool you. I think a lot do hoax it. I think a lot do fake it. They know they're moving it. But on the flip side, there's quite a few that don't realize that they're moving it. Uh, and the, one of the best things you can do is, is whoever is using the pendulum, set up a video camera. Set up a video camera that's level with their hand. Uh, and so put it on a tripod over here. Make sure it's level with their hand. And take video. Take like two or three minutes of it. And then play it back at high speed. And you will see the hand going all over the place. It, it really uh, stands out when you do that. John Michael, I may have misunderstood what you were saying, but when you get a psychic reading, do you mislead the psychic by giving them false answers or do you just not answer their questions when they ask? I do both. So I do both. Sometimes I just, I sit there and, and I don't answer. And usually I say like, okay, okay, okay instead of yes or no. And that <laughs> totally screws them up. Let me tell you, um, that's even worse than, than just faking it. Um, it just screws them up. And usually I would say like half the time that session ends before it's halfway over, uh, because I don't give information. I don't confirm or deny. Um, but on the other hand, yes, sometimes I will mislead because if they ask me a question, if I have a sister that passed, if they're talking to my deceased loved ones, they should not be asking that. 
Um, that's the way I see it. So if they ask it, yes, I will say yes. And yes, it's misleading on my part. But when they start telling me all about my sister, like her likes and dislikes, what she loved and her feelings with me and missing me and all this stuff. That tells me like this is this is total bullshit. She's not. They're not talking to someone. They're not talking to a deceased loved one. They're talking to an imaginary friend that I made up in my head. Um, and I didn't even make up a backstory. You know, like you can't even claim you're reading my mind because all I'm saying is, yes, I have. All right. I have a sister. No, I don't. And that's what I keep thinking. No, I don't. No, I don't. So, yes, I do both there, John. And uh, I don't I don't see anything wrong with that. Um some people may say, yeah, you're misleading it and you're not being fair. But you know what? If you're if, a, if I'm paying for a reading for you to t tell me messages from my loved ones and all you're doing is asking me questions, you're not being fair to me. You're stealing my money. Um, that's how I see it. So good question, though. John Kennedy. Uh, this was brought up earlier, but what's your thoughts on sleep paralysis? A lot of my family still claims it's demons, even after I explained it. So. I've touched on this before, but sleep paralysis is a known condition. It's a known thing. And um, producer Donna has experienced it. And it's terrifying. There, it's terrifying. Uh, and it, you have a good pair here because she experienced it for herself. So she can tell you from that angle. But I was laying next to her and I saw it. I woke up because she was, for lack of a better word, whimpering. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I it woke me up because and, then, you know, and in my head I am screaming his name I just couldn't get like he couldn't hear me right like, I'm screaming Kenny trying to wake him up and he is not hearing that because that's what I think I'm saying and I'm trying to talk I'm trying from me in the real world <laughs> <laughs> I am actually like I'm, I'm leaning up you know how you're laying in bed and you're you're up on your elbow and I'm looking at her. And she's, she's like this far from me and she's going, mm, mm, mm. that's about it. Like no flailing about, no screaming, just, I couldn't move. just, I was, I, it felt like you were paralyzed. Like I could right. not move my body at all. And that's why it felt so terrifying. And like, your, your eyes weren't even open. No, nothing. No, I just was screaming your name. Like, cause I I felt a presence laying on me and it felt evil. I I heard a doll come in our room and I knew it was a big dog. We have a little dog and the little dog, I felt her next to me on my leg. So when I felt, when I heard a big doll coming in the room and over to my side, it's, it was terrifying, terrifying. And to, and all I wanted to do was hit you. Like in, like I'm laying there and I'm just like, my arms like I'm trying to move my arm and I'm like Kenny wake up wake up wake up like like you know there's yeah. something in our room help me like why yeah. do you not hear this because she was not moving at all <laughs> and and that's what I observed and I recognized it right away and I took my time like I didn't like grab her and say wake up wake up because I wasn't sure what would happen you know like you hear the stories about don't wake up uh, people that sleepwalk and, and stuff like that. So I didn't want to like, like jar her awake. So it was more like a gentle, like, Hey, Hey, I'm right here. I'm right here. Wake up. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. Wake up. And slowly she came out of it. And, uh, I wouldn't call that slowly. I would call it like <laughs> terrifyingly wake up. Going, what the fuck? <laughs> back, again, back here in the real world, <laughs> it was, she slowly came out of it where your eyes opened up. Like you, you looked almost like it reminds me of like an old vampire movie where they're laying in the coffin and all of a sudden you're like, your eyes opened. They didn't like shoot open, but they slowly opened up and you started looking around just with your eyes and then you started because moving. I still couldn't move my yeah. body. Yeah. And you slowly. So sleep paralysis is when your, your body is, is tricked. It tricks itself. Um, you're still asleep. Your body is asleep. And when you when you go to sleep, your body kind of shuts off. Um, it metaphorically, the brain shuts off power to your muscles in your body. So you don't act out your dreams because that's a that's a big problem. <laughs> I mean, especially some of the dreams I've had 
Whew. Um, but you don't want to, you don't want to act out because you would be flailing out. You'll be kicking and stuff like that. So you essentially get paralyzed um, throughout your dreams. And the trick is that something goes wrong and I'm not sure what it is, but something goes wrong where your brain starts to wake up, but it doesn't turn the body back on. So when you're brain is going, you're still kind of stuck in this dreamlike state, but you're starting to be coherent. You're starting to be cognitive of what's going on around you. So the two mesh. And when you have this meshing, you get a nightmare scenario, basically, because weird shit goes on and it overlaps or overlays reality. And it becomes really, really scary. Um, but then eventually, once it passes, you, your body starts waking up and you can move again. But unfortunately, people are left with these experiences. And if you don't have enough, uh, if you don't have someone there to talk you through it, or you don't research it, or you don't bother to look into it, it can be a very scary situation or experience that stays with you forever, especially if it happens multiple times. Um, and I can definitely see how people take that as... Uh, uh, paranormal experiences or demonic. It uh, felt so, demonic. Yeah. It, it, for it, lack of a better. It, I can it, see. It was evil. It felt like an evil presence. Doctor Evil. Doctor Evil. And I won't for. I'll never forget it. It's one of those things. That it, it just won't go away. It's like. Whew. All right. So I think people, we're. I think like we're caught up. People have experienced it. I've never experienced it, and I know most people are going to respond like you don't want to, but. Yes, I'd like to experience it. Um, mostly to have that experience, to to know what it, it is from the other side. I've seen it from this side. I want to see it from that side. Um, and, and knowing what I know, I'm always curious, like, all right, if this starts to happen, will I recognize it? Like, will I be able to recognize it and maybe stay in it and be like, oh, lucid dreaming now. Yeah. I would love for I'm you gonna, to experience just so I'm gonna take you would experience. take control of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is my dream now. My dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> flying around. Mm -hmm. Yep. Flying around. All right. I think we're caught up. That's awesome. I'm going to go over some announcements and we're going to close this out. We are almost at the two hour mark. Um, let's see. Don't go away yet because I have announcements. First, May 15th. So next month, I'll be doing a presentation for the Western Canadian Reason Skeptic Camp. Say that thing, that's it. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Skeptic Camp is pretty much a, it's a, it's an organization of skeptics. And in this case, um, they're going to have a, uh, a bunch of speakers and we're all going to do a 20 minute uh, talk followed by 10 minutes of Q&A. And I'll be doing a presentation I think my scheduled slot is 1 p.m. on May 15th, but I'm going to be talking about uh, what to look for in photographs to uh, to see what's going on. And I'm going to take one old photograph and from the 1900s, um, early 19, like actually 1900, the year 1900, and then a, a newer photograph, and then just go through announcements in your help bar, like your rules. Shut up, Bob. <laughs> Every week. We forget Bob every week. Damn it, Kenny. Announcements. <laughs> in your, oh, shut the fuck up, Bob. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Oh, I got to get around to it. You, oh, there's so much other projects I have to do. All right. One of these days, I'm, I'm going to surprise you. Right now, Bob. It's on the list. All right. So I'm going to do that. Skip the camp. And I'll be talking about the photography and, and things that I look for in photographs in order to determine whether they may be faked or um, optical illusion or what have you. So again, it's only a 20 minute talk, so it'll be brief. June, like <laughs> June 3rd, the 5th is phenomenology. Whoo. I cannot wait for this. I am so excited. We are so excited. Yeah, both Donna and I will have booths. We're vaccinated. Yes. We're both vaccinated now. Donna got her second shot today. And so within 10 days, she will be fully vaccinated. For this so we're excited about it but june 3rd to 5th i'll be in gettysburg pennsylvania for phenomenology i will have my skeptical help booth up and anyone that shows up you are free to come by ask a question like we do on this show or you can even yell at me if you want to you can make a scene as long as you make a donation to the cancer research institute 
I will have a can set up with a sign on it. And that's all I ask. Uh, you can ask me questions. You can talk. You can tell me you hate me. You can scream at me. Bloody murder. I don't care as long as you make a donation. That That's all I ask. Donna will be there with her Lucky Tiki Creations booth selling all kinds of really cool stuff. Ooh, yes. Lots of new stuff coming. Next week's going to be a big week for me crafting. So maybe I'll like jump in next week. And, or not next week because I'll be away, but the following, the following week. week. Maybe. To show a few new things coming. Our maybe. Way. She's trying to take over my show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so producer rights. <laughs> that's, that's your pay. That's my pay right now. You got it. You, you get to my have a commercial. Little mini advertisement. I'll give then. you five minutes. You can plug your shit. <laughs> you can pimp your stuff out. Um. So, uh, next event is August twentieth to twenty second. I'll be at the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. We both will. Um, and that's also in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and that benefits Pennsylvania wounded warriors and kids with cancer. So good causes. I'll also be there with my donation can again. And uh, one of the things I do, because it, it has come up in the past, is that once the conferences are over for a certain period of time, I make the donation for all the money. And then I post a receipt online um, because I've had, sadly, I've had people accuse me of like just making money off this and stealing the money and shit like that. So to hell with those people. But I post a receipt anyway, so you guys can see. And it's not to brag. I don't want people to, to get the wrong idea. It's just to show that, yes, the money goes to that good cause. Um, and then lastly, September 25th is the Power Unity Conference in Newbridge, New, what? Woodbridge, Woodbridge, New Jersey. Uh, and I'm just going to be attending there. I don't have a booth set up. Um, and then let's see. Next week on this show, at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to have Barry Rogerio. I think that I think that's Rogerio. how you pronounce Barry Rogerio. We're going to talk about paranormal equipment, um, the gadgets that are made, people that uh, have these companies that make ghost hunting gadgets. And he actually reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I'm really sick of all these people that are charging hundreds of dollars for these pieces of equipment that only cost like $10 or $15. So we're actually going to talk about some of these pieces of equipment, get into the, the components and look at how you can make them cheaply if you want to. Um, and we have already had a conversation and I was like, wow, he showed me some things I didn't even think of. So I'm excited that that's going to be a fun show. Um, and then tomorrow night is 8 p.m. Eastern is Three Tortured Souls with uh, Dave Schumacher and Tim Vickers. And we are talking about, I think we're talking about cognitive biases. I think so. I think that's the topic. I'm not a producer for that one. So yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so it's not my turn. We, we rotate on who's in charge and it's not my turn. It's, I think it's Tim's turn. So tune in for that and uh, we're going to have fun. Um, and that's it. I am done talking. Uh, thank you again for everyone that's, that stuck around. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the new people that showed up and, and hung out for a while. And again, thank you for, to, uh, Jason Halls for hanging out for an hour and taking our questions, taking your questions and then, you know, just being real with us. So I appreciate that. And I want everyone to have a great weekend and enjoy yourself. Enjoy your rum. And then that's pretty enjoy much your Enjoy your rum because rum is important. And uh, finally, uh, never stop learning. See you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>